Hello. Welcome to another of our weekly Zoom Kata seminar series. Tonight's Kata is Niju Shiho. Uh, Niju Shiho means 24 techniques, 24 movements. Uh, of course, it's, it's up to a 34 count now, official count. So, but it re the 24 refers to that there are 24 distinct stances. And if you, if you work on it, you can find the 24 stances. So if you stay in the same stance and do a few other techniques, it's still the same stance. Nijia Shiho is, again, one of the very old kata with probably Chinese origins. It was one of three that reportedly that Gigo Funakoshi was taught by Kenwa Mabuni, the founder of Shitoru, taught Gigo these three katas, uh, Nijushio, Sochin, and Unsu, and he brought, brought them back to the Shotokan stable. And that, there they were modified to fit our style of, of practice. Um, Nijushio has, has typical linear techniques that we see in a lot of our katas, but also has a lot of circular techniques, uh, which is more reminiscent of a lot of the Chinese uh, styles of fighting. The kata has to be done very smoothly and gracefully. You should, they say you're supposed to envision the waves, rolling waves on the ocean when you're making these, a lot of these movements. Uh, it's ambusen, the line of, of execution of technique, is very compact. You don't need much space for nijushio. And it has a lot of elbows and knees and joint locks and things like that. So this gives the distinct feeling of that we're doing this kata in a, in a tight space and, there's, and people are all, all over us, a lot of, lot of uh, close quarter fighting. Uh, two techniques, Nisha Shio has a lot of specialized techniques, but two techniques that are different, especially noteworthy, are one, the extent, uh, extensive use of sanshin stems, and we'll talk about that more later, Sanchen Sen is a very short stance, but it's very stable if you do it right. And it's for infighting, it's for, for close quarter fighting. The other thing is the use of uh, the two side thrust kicks. Um, the only other kata we have is uh, Basai has a side thrust kick, but there's no side thrust kick in any of the other katas. These, uh, all of these longer range kicks, side thrust kick, Mawashigiri, Shirogiri, were added to our school more recently. The Okinawan katas and the Okinawan styles don't use these kicks very much, these types of kicks very much, at least they didn't back in Funakoshi's day. So, Niju Shiho is a kata that is more reminiscent of, of the Okinawan type katas, like a Shoran Ryu and the uh, Shito Ryu and uh, people like that than any of our lakatas, arguably. It's, so why did, uh, and incidentally it was Gigo Funakoshi who was credited with mostly with creating this longer, more aggressive uh, style of karate. Sensei Funakoshi obviously had much smaller stances, all the pictures, but if you see a picture of Gigo Funakoshi, he's, he's, he's right down to the ground in a very, very modern looking stent. Um, so why did they change it to this? The naysayers, the critics of Shotokan, say it's for sport. It was for sport karate. But this is like, they, they, they don't have their, their history in order. Because sport karate was developed 20 years after the style became pretty much the way it is because since they not you know, needed to figure out a way to have people do matching without killing each other, which so prior to that there were a lot of bloody battles in, in you know informal or formal contests. So sport karate came later, but it is true this longer aggressive style that we now have it was meant for fighting, for kumite, for dueling, where you have one or two or how many opponents, and you are, you are in a battle with them. 
I would call the Okinawan styles as more self-defense kind of uh, techniques. What do I mean by that? I mean they're better, more suited to the surprise attack. You didn't get in stance. Somebody grabs you suddenly, somebody takes a quick punch at you. For example, uh, so if somebody grabs you and you try to make a long hand shut on stance, you're probably going to get pulled off balance. So usually when somebody's grabbing you, you never make a long stance. Uh, not until you, you've broken the grip. Usually you'll do something in place, make your strike, just like Nijishiro, but your body can't move away if you're being held. Uh, another example is somebody's in your face, direct their palm, and they just punch you out of nowhere. You're not going to have time to go back into hand shodan, front stance, and rising block. The best you might be able to do, I hope, is, is to, in place, block that technique. Again, what am I doing? I'm making sunshine stance. So, it's the important thing is, need to show this important context is you've got to remember the difference between kumite and self-defense. And so you've got to learn these close-range stances, and you've got to learn these close-range techniques to make yourself a three-dimensional fighter and not just a partners in the dojo uh, situation. And besides that, if somebody grabbed you in a bar or something and you went back into a full front sense, you probably would trip over something. So these short senses are really important. Uh, okay, let's get in, let's do the kata ones together to count, and then I'll start the analysis. Read. Comes off 
to the side a little bit. Not, the hand is not in the center because the elbow would be too far outside. But that makes sense because if you're pushing down, you're de redirecting to punch a little bit off center. So if you make a mistake, it's not going to hit you. So, so, so you're directing the punch a little off center. Next technique punch. This one make sure you keep your same depth and length of stance, but shift inward. Next technique. Okay. In the book it says this is Kamaya, but uh, obviously it has a self-defense meaning. First from the bottom up, we're in Rinoji Dachi. Rinoji Dachi is a front foot slightly turned in. Back, your front and back foot are kind of the same position as front stance. Weights a little bit forward. Okay, but so it's like a little front stance, but mostly almost standing straight up. This one, you block the punch, you punch the opponent, then you grab his wrist, but in actuality, and you put his elbow over your forearm. But in actuality, in the application, you'd reach this way and grab his wrist and pull to here, not, not to here, but you'd be this way, holding his wrist. Okay, why do you have to be on top or you're pressing down? If you were this way, he can just go like this and release your grip so you have to be on top. Um, this position, with your forearm at a right angle, so the elbow would be right on the middle of the forearm, is, is all the old videos, everybody was in this position. But in Baskarate it says that this is a, actually a huge, that this elbow is forward. And this is the way I originally learned the kata. So, You can still do this elbow, elbow on the, his elbow on your, the bend, bending part of your elbow. You can still do the same technique in this position. Okay, this one also, if you're pulling the hand out, this is open, you can strike to armpit. Okay. Uh, so I don't know why, why that's probably went this way. Obviously people were doing it two different ways back then. Uh, but this is a, a, one of these techniques, and there are a few of these in the kata where, where all the, the Hongbu Dojo instructors aren't teaching the kata the same way. Izumi says, I like this one better. And he said, this is, this, is the real, this is the correct one, but I like this one better. And there is, there is a, a charm to this one because you, you sort of trap his arm in between your arm and, and uh, bicep a little more here. If you lose your grip, you can slide off. So I, I could see that. This one's very slow. Slow. Then, pom, pom. These two are supposed to go right one right into the other. So you have to focus and right away go. Next, from here, we turn and come to here. Sanshindachi and the two hands to hip. Uh, okay, this one. The Hongbu Dojo people are doing this differently and, some, and teaching it differently. So it, mostly to do with the height that they're bringing their hands. Okay? The way I do it, and at least one or two of them are saying to do this, is to come out about uh, shoulder level face level and pull to here. What this, the application changes with the angle of the arms. What this means is that punches come in and you're grabbing possibly the wrist but more likely the gi and you're pulling him into you. Okay, you, you pull him into you and, and then make a wasatsuki, the you punch. So you, you Grab and pull. This, if you make a higher arc, 
and, and if you watch competitors, they, they're all over the place, but to make a higher arc, this, you're not going to be able to grab the punch. Okay, so this means that you're coming down on the punch, like this, so that he's going boom and his hand gets slapped down. Okay, slap down on the punch. So, since there is no consensus on how they're teaching this one, you should do both. See what you think. Try the application out when you get a partner next. See how they feel. See, make sure you know the, the difference between the two. Okay. Double punch. Then, this is a, a Samyuki. Okay. Then, Kakiwake uke. The sunny uke means a scissors block. Zenwa means a form scissors block. The kata, uh, first just execution of the technique. So you come up, slight pause, breathe in, cross your wrists a little, slowly into kakiwake uke, close the hip. Bump, mm. this way. The cut is done straight in front of the face, and the knee comes up. The application, because you don't want the punch to slip right between your arms and hit you anyway. The application, you pull it off to the side. So you scissors, and pull it to the side, and that moment that you have his fist between your arms, he's a little bit stuck there. So then this one can be knee to the lower parts. Or, if you want to think of it as protecting your lower parts, possibly mean that too. Then, from here, standard bunkai for the kakiwaki uke is, you got his hand between your arms, you just grab his right hand, which he punched with, and you pull him down to the side. Pull him off balance. And if you pull far, you pull him out of the way. But of course, this block, the wedge block, can, uh, can mean somebody's trying to grab you or something. And you're blocking that grab. can also mean that. Next, from here, we have preparation, rising block, and rising uh, empiuchi, or tate empiuchi. The important thing here is, this is not a technique. So don't, don't, don't like do this without something else happening. What you're doing is making rising block to the side as quick as you can, and this hand just shoots out and down. So this is prep, right hand is preparation, and these, this one has to go very quick onto. Also, if I'm trying to make rising block from here, I, you can't bring your arm quickly to the side, you can't bring your arm too far down. You have to pretty much uh, go almost from the, this position, right, in the left, to do it quickly. So uh, check yourself on that very direct course, because you've got to do it fast. Next, shuto kakeuke means hook at the end. Okay. You have to make sure that you are coming directly from this elbow strike position across. Don't, don't do this first. Don't, don't make a preparatory move. Just go as many advanced kata are go direct to here. Okay. Then side thrust kick and the punch. Then same. Direct. Side thrust kick and punch. Just like Teki showed on, you have to get your shoulders all the way around for the punch to be effective. You can't come back here somewhere. You have to turn them all the way. If anybody looked at the videos I sent you, the very oldest one from the late 40s or whatever it was, does all he's doing is this. So he's just lifting his knee, assumedly to avoid a foot sweep or something. 
And then he's pulling during when he's punching the opponent. So the original meaning was grab the wrist, avoid the foot sweep, pull the wrist in. Now it's grab the wrist, pull them in, make side thrust kick. You still got a hold of him, punch. Side thrust kick was, rumor has it, uh, introduced to this kata probably, probably very soon after, the early 50s or something, I would assume, because there's a video of Sensei Asai in the 50s doing it. And he may even be the one that suggested it, because this was during the time that they were starting to import these techniques that were, if they were not new to Shotokan, they weren't used very much. So the side thrust kick was probably the last thing added to that kata, except for the small little changes. Okay, next, after this punch, this is a tabuki wrist, makio toshi uke, means wrist curling downward block. So your wrist is curling over an incoming punch, and then you strike low, geidan, and jodan with teisha. This People do all kinds of weird things with this. Let's see, I'm trying to get the right angle for you. So, you're the attacker. I just punched over here. The attacker's coming in at a 45 degree angle. Okay, all that's needed is to turn the hand over to this line to block this incoming attack. But a lot of people make some kind of extra movement. I'm going to the, the over here first. And that's just, that's just waving your hands around for no good reason, because it isn't direct. Beginners who haven't practiced it, boom guy at all, and they don't have it in their head, I just, I don't know, they're doing kind of flippy things with their wrists. That just doesn't mean anything, so. All you do is go, one, okay? And that's the in-breath, one, and then the out-breath. This stance is interesting that, that this, this technique, they say you can do either straight or in a bus side eye configuration. And every, every instructor says it. Either one's okay. Well, they're both okay. It changes the meaning. Uh, if you're only fielding one punch, it's coming to stomach, then you drop it down, make the opponent do this, and pull him, you hit him. If you're straight, you're going to make a stronger strike. But if the opponent was hit, punching stomach, and then quickly he's punching in the face, then you have to block that face punch with the Basaidae type maneuver. So it depends on the circumstance which one you choose, but as far as what one you want to do while you're doing the kata, I kind of like the Basai one, but I, I switch back and forth because it, they say either one's okay. I want to make sure I can do them all. This strike is Teisho with the palm heel. Okay, and this position is, we have a bunch of them in Nijushiho. This is a very strong position for a short punch or short strike with the elbows into the body, like this close to the body. Uh, can make a lot of impact. Okay, next. This one is Haito Muashiuchi, the rear hand. So sasha means just open hand with the palm facing to your right when you're finished. Okay? Talk about well this this one's pretty much universal. Everybody decided to that, but the rear hand has evolved. And I'm not sure whether there was an evolution, because the old videos show the hand open. Again, it's best karate that calls this uh, Teisho Uchi, a 
strike. I don't know, I guess they, thinking it could be somebody coming from behind simultaneously. Okay, but that's the only reference I could find. So that's correct, that this is Tasha. Some of the older instructors like uh, uh, Kanazawa are doing Haito in the back too, so the palm is upward. But the Bunkai means that you're, you're coming, in the book says you're in first your hand should be in this position when you come across. You're coming across and you're grabbing the opponent's punching wrist and you're pulling him into you and striking while he's in this position or this position. Okay, so you're coming around, grabbing the wrist and striking. So it'd probably be here or here in the actual boom. In execution, I couldn't find anybody to do it, do it the way the book. Everybody seems to do this, coming across horizontally. And this has been variously described by instructors in the past as making a, a feint, a rake across the opponent's eyes feeling, but then coming, then opening the hand to here in the back. So, I guess that's okay, but that's what everybody's doing, but, uh, okay, we are here. Next, this one, Ki, is a Aishu Ageuchi rising back at a hand strike, but it's, this is, this doesn't mean you're hitting anything. This means that you are making some noise, confusing the opponent, and Offering him a target. Um, look, at, look at this juicy abdomen. I think you want to put a front kick right here. Okay. So it has no more meaning than that. Make sure that it's not covering your vision. Striking here, but come up a little bit so you can see under your hands in this position. Okay. Next, we come to here. Sasho Sukuyuki means open hand. Scooping block, this one's Koko Osai Sukidashi, which means tiger mouth pressing, thrusting. Okay? First, execution. Too many people do this, something like this. And this is, if somebody kicks you, boom, just like that. You can't go like this. You, your elbows can't go outside somewhere. Because you'll get kicked. You'll be too slow. One is scooping to this side, so you make a little arc. The other one is pressing from the other side, so you make a little arc, so boom. Okay. So it mostly just feels like down, but you, you, you've, got to, you've got to have an inside-outside feeling at the end, so you need an arc. But it's, a, it's one continuous motion. It can't go one, two feeling. Okay. Um, this one, this is okay. Grabbing the heel of the opponent, you must bring it back past the edge of your body so he doesn't kick you. Good idea. Okay, so his foot's, his foot's past your body. You have his ankle here. This one is pressing to the inside of the knee. If he's kicking with his right foot. Okay, and, and if you press hard, you make a scissors action with this. He'll go right over because you're pressing the knee in a, in a very painful direction when you do that move. These are done quick, quick as you can. Okay, pom pom. Uh, I was taught by Mori Sensei, and I'm sure some of you are still. Hey, grappling with this idea to punch this way as opposed to this way. Okay. I can't find any reference to punch anybody, that anybody ever punched that way. So I, I don't know where that came from. What's the angle of the body uh, in this attack? And it's a good, very good question because, because uh, it brings up a basic principle of leverage and power and gaze where your eyes are looking 
If you want power to go straight, your eyes look straight and your back is straight. If you want the power to go down, you have to bend it a little at the waist so that you're punching at ver uh, for, uh, perpendicular to your body. Not going to be this way. So this one, because you're a little bit downward, yeah, you're you're uh, you can be fo forward a little bit, and not too much because it's not that much down. It's not that different coming to here. Okay, but a little bit's okay. This one says so, Senkutsu Dachi, and I believe this one says Senkutsu Dachi, but but most of the competitors look like they're doing Fudo Dachi or something in between. Most of the competitors have this back knee bent a little bit. So, I don't know if it's really an option or it's just what they want to get away with. Of course, a little bend in the front stance knee is okay anyway for an advanced stance. But, so if you're doing a little bit like Fudogachi, it wouldn't be this way. But a little bit, that's okay. Next, Heishu Uke. I've got a hand block. This is interesting. Niju Shiho. All the other katas that used to have Heishu Uke, Basai, and Gura, they all got changed to Kaki, Kaki Wake Uke. Okay. Turn over at the very end. This one comes straight flat across. I think it's easier to do this movement. It's easier to clear your arm by starting with the palm down and then just turning it in course so that it hits with the back of the hand. But if you come low enough, you can do this, no problem. And that's the original way. Just make sure you, you are hitting with the back of the hand, not curling at the end. All right. Next. Rising elbow strike or tate and piuchi, vertical elbow strike. What people do, I think the mistake a lot of people make with this one is they, they want to see better, so they put their head down and kind of look under their armpit. But if you move your head off vertically, you don't lose power. So you want your head to be perfectly vertical. And once you come up to this position, at least your right eye is completely can't see. You'll be able to see with the left eye a little bit if you're looking sideways. But make sure you're not compromising your posture to make this technique. Okay? So me is me is block the opponent. Take a grip. And in the kata we have our hand horizontal. But if you were uh, doing this in bunkai. It's better to be elbow bent a little, because this way you, it's too it's too easy to miss. Bent a little, you can you can intercept something coming in straight a lot easier, and then then grab. Okay. Block, grab his wrist, pull him to your hip, elbow strike the face, hit him. Okay? In the, the book says this is Megashi Uke Soto, Megashi Uke. So that infers that he might be punching and you're blocking, blocking the punch. Okay? Next one, Menius, possibly. He's grabbing your wrist. And you use the again right to, to release the grip. Block the punch. Pull him in elbow to face. Hit him. Maybe blocking a second punch with your upper hand. Grabs your wrist. Release the grip. Okay, next one. This one. Now, my, my, Uchi. And, get on the First, uh, Important thing is you gotta hold your elbow as you're stepping into this technique, you gotta hold your elbow way back behind you so that your hip 
completely fires around at the very end of the movement. Don't turn, start turning your body toward too early. You want to stay, like a lot of movements in kata, stay away. Don't come in all the elbows. These are done quickly, but you've got to get power in the elbow strike. So that means most of the power is coming from the twist of the hip, not something your hands are doing or arms are doing. Of course, elbow strike must be come off the elbow to the love handles and pum. Not around, or you'll lose all your leverage from your hip action. Okay, you lose connection if your elbow leaves your butt. So come up to here. Okay. This one in the book that says this is Kamai, and there's a lot of kata where aside same thing. You're covering your midsection. One possible meaning. Um, but another bunkai for this one. We block the punch, we grab his wrist. And we hit to ribs, we just have his wrist here. And then maybe he makes another technique low, but this action can be meanings of hit to the groin. Okay? So you hit him in the ribs, ribs groin. Okay? So that one, that can be a little cut for that one also. Then, another of this set. Then, one more time, we come to here, okay, and again, you, you decide where you want, what you want this to mean, where you want this to be, and when some instructor tells you, no lower, go lower, when some instructor tells you, go higher, go higher, just understand the difference in the boom kind. This one has a Yoriyashi, a shift, how far you shift? You're looking right at your mark, so you've got to shift to get on your mark. So for you, find the length of that shift, so you will be on your correct line to finish the kata. Final techniques. Again, we have the wrist curling downward block and the two teisho. Uchi, Awase, Teisha Uchi, strike two, Chudan and the Jodan. This one, and we'll show you some iterations. This one, so it's all from Sunshine Stance. It says in the book, and, and this is what Sensei Weki says only block with the right arm. Block a punch with the right arm, pull it down like, you're pulling him down like this, over hit a stomach punch, come to position and strike the opponent. So you block over his wrist, you pull his wrist down here, explode the ribs and the side of his face, and two, two, uh, Teisha Uchis. But, Sensei Aweki is only the chief instructor. He seems to be in the minority. Okay, because because most of the instructors like to make a left hand block and then come right hand block and go. Sensei Wacky says, "Oh no no no, that's a goju goju method. No, this is our method." Okay, except these these guys aren't following him. So let's anyway. This one's easy, and it extends just the hand. This one's easy, just right hand move, come to here, go. Piece of cake. Let's practice option number two. Your right hand drops and your left hand comes across and blocks the face punch like this. One, left hand across, touch your forearms together. Then your right hand comes up and they come to this position. This can mean there's two punches, one, two, or it can mean block and curl over the same arm and pull it down. It can mean either one of these. For the people who don't know this, these techniques, let's do them slowly by count so you can get the idea. Left hand block, right hand curl over, pull to hip. 
Left hand block across, right hand curl over, pull to hip. Left hand, right hand. Both are face level blocks. Left, right. And once you get the pattern, you don't stop. Okay, but it gets more complicated. The way I learned it originally, and the way Sensei Naka seems to do it, is a little bit more, more big movement. Instead of coming across with the left hand first, you make a big circle with both hands. And, I, and the way I taught myself this is, I've got my hands on the steering wheel of a Mack truck or something. Turn right. Then cross with the left hand, then go with the right hand, and go. Your big steering wheel, turn to the right, cross with the left, cross with the right, go. Turn the truck to the right, cross with the left, cross with the right, go. Looks more like this. Obviously, I, I'm not sure what the bunkai is for this outward motion because you're leaving your, your inside open for a while before you come to here. Um, but it could be setting somebody off balance. Uh, things like this, this kind of action, twisting action, can mean something else. Um, some people, I haven't seen our JKA people do this in a while, but I have seen this. They do this, this same thing. And they don't come to here. They come to here, the opposite shoulder and hip, and then they switch when they make the push. Okay, so that's another version. It's, it's out there. I haven't seen our instructors do it recently. Okay, and of course, uh, like I said, Kiai was just before, Kiai is here just before this last series of movements. And this is the in breath, this is the out breath. Make sure that this one is brought in tight, not shoulders up or elbows outside. Bring it in, bring it in tight. And drive up the center with the strike. Okay. 